Welcome, powerful nonsenses. Hello. To another edition of <laughs> edition, edition of the Powerful Nonsense Show. You put those batteries in the light and they're pretty bright. <laughs> yeah, he also offended me. I'm sorry. He was like, oh, I can tell us. The, the light's definitely brighter. I can see all the wrinkles. I meant the background. Yeah, Stop being well. So, so sensitive. I turned 27 in a couple of months. I'm moving, transitioning from mid 20s to late 20s, and it's. Is it hurting? Know, it's hurting. Well, I've got the greys, I have to go short Mate, on the so side. have I. So have I, but Horrendous. I've hidden them well. Well, you've got more than me. Well, um, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, for those that are joining us for the first time, I am Wayne Ingram. And this abusive git is Jem Yildiz. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> um, and we're going to talk today about something which is very close to home for me, which is about being a starving artist and how you can avoid being a star- starving artist. Yeah, I think this episode is sort of based on the idea that we speak to a lot of like young people who want to go into the, whatever creative endeavours it may be, writing, acting, mm-hmm. music. And so we thought actually... Let's put together an episode where we literally break down each of these options and actually just give as much information on, if this was me, this is what I would do. Mm-hmm. We obviously haven't got experience in going into all these fields, yeah. but if we were starting out, this is exactly what yeah. I would want to do. This is this is opinion. <laughs> like a lot of our stuff. Yeah, this is not, this is not us claiming to be artist career coaches. Uh, this is not us claiming to be master creative entrepreneurs. This is just... From things that we have observed, things opportunities that we are aware of, just kind of putting it out there, maybe experiment. Could work for you, maybe, who knows. Yeah. Anyway. Just putting that disclaimer out there. So, should we get cracking? Where are we going to get first? Um, Okay. So we've got a few particular sort of career types that we want to uh, address. So we're going to go through them. I think, let's start with author, because I think that's a... No, I don't, well, want I, to think, say, I don't want to say simpler one, but I think no, like that's think, a good starting point. I think it's a really strong one to start with because I think everybody's had that thought in their mind with, I should write a book. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I think it will apply to everybody. I've had that thought of, I should write a book, and then gone, Pizza. I really can't. No, <laughs> I just don't have the, the patience to, to, to write a book. And they say, don't they, that everybody's got a book inside them. Something like that. Yeah, I haven't found it yet. It's in there somewhere. <laughs> Maybe that's why the bell is still the, there. You've got the bookcase in there as well. <laughs> wow. Offensive git. Offensive git. <laughs> no joking. Anyway, so authors. Authors. Okay. Uh, I feel like one advantage authors have got is that their craft is the written word, which is basically our oldest form of media beyond drawing. Hmm. And it's available everywhere. In fact, most of what most content of what people consume is text based. Yeah. More than video or audio, I would say. So, um, first of all, just get writing for a start. Just get writing. Short form, long form, whatever. I think probably start with if you're just starting out, start with start with short form. <laughs> start with short form. Do not shout. <laughs> <laughs> start with short form. I would maybe set up a website where you're putting out, let's say it's fiction, you're putting out short stories. Free website. You can find a nice free website or yes. a blog, a blogging website, a blogging platform. Mm-hmm. Yeah, blogging platform's fine. Uh, yeah, and I think that was a good, a good point. Just start putting out content. So maybe if you've got a short story in mind, maybe every week you put out uh, a chapter or maybe even every mm-hmm. couple of days you put out a page. Mm-hmm. And I think this way you'll get some consistency. You'll also get a few little hits here and there. People, maybe I will write my book. <laughs> you'll get people obviously showing that they've viewed it. You might get a thumbs up and I think that gives you a little bit of confidence page mm-hmm. by page. It also keeps you sort of a, like you feel accountable because now people are waiting. Maybe they put a comment, oh, I can't uh, wait for the next page. And then what you can do after that is, so you just start writing. The main struggle I think a lot of writers have is, is they just get so stuck in the head about whether it's going to be good enough. Mm-hmm. It's actually just get it out there, put it on, put the put the work out there, be consistent, and eventually you might have a short story. Mm-hmm. And I think the next point after that but is... But the thing is as well, I just want to, because this is probably something, if I'm an author going, yeah, but I want to I want to live off being an author. I don't want to just give away my book for free, mm-hmm. right? So they're probably thinking, well, if I put out a page as a blog post, I'm going to end up putting my whole book out for free. But you haven't collated it together. And actually, Pat Flynn always says people will pay for convenience. Yeah. They're not going to, if they want to read your book, they want to read your book. They don't want to sit on your website going, well, the blog post, next blog yeah, post, yeah, yeah. next blog post, next blog post. So you're still actually going to be able to sell a few great copies, 
maybe not so many because people are, are going to read it. I'll admit that. Yeah. But you're going to still going to sell a lot of copies because a you've got a buzz around your book, and b people are going to pay for that convenience, so they will want to buy the book. And also, you'll also get the people that have enjoyed your book so much they that they feel it. that they want to buy it they because a they've got a copy forever, and b they want to support your work. So don't worry too much about that. Yeah, I think that's a really good idea. I think once you start putting out that um yeah, once you start putting out that blog content as well. And a good way to actually format it, okay, I'm going. I've got about six different thoughts in my head. <laughs> I need to siphon them down. Okay, the first thought is this idea that actually when you put out that content, you're gonna definitely build your audience up. But also mm-hmm. maybe have in mind in the future that actually if you're creating a book, a short story, have in mind that it might be a series as well. Because if you have like... Put that first book out for free via the blog posts and exactly. then the rest of them. So if that, that end book of that first series has a cliffhanger, people will be like, oh God, I want the next book. And mm-hmm. that's now that you've built up that audience, maybe you're getting a few hundred people to that mm-hmm. to your website every every month or whatever. Then you know that they are eager to get the next part. So then you can make it as a, a series that goes ongoing yeah. and then maybe you build it out into a bigger book. I think that's a good way of looking at it. Mm-hmm iTunes do it all the time with TV series, actually. Mm-hmm. They'll be like, here's the first free episode, well, think knowing that. that you're going to buy the rest of the series. Because make a pilot book. It's the pilot book, it's the, the short pilot, story. That's a really good idea. Make the pilot book. I like that. Yeah, and I think as well, when you're talking about, oh, well, people want to make money from this, understand that a lot of the time when you're doing a creative endeavor, it takes time to build the audience. Yeah. So you're not going to be making money instantly, but it's definitely one of those long game things. And I think if it gets you right in often by having this blog post available, then suddenly you've made your short story available. Maybe it's only 99p for that pilot book. Mm -hmm. And then you've got new series coming after that. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great way to start. And obviously there's so many different platforms available nowadays to sell those books, whether it's Mm -hmm. Amazon, is it KDP? Yeah, Kindle Publishing. Um, What was the one where you could actually get the book printed? So once you've got the... Create Space. Create Space is another one to get the book printed. Um, A lot of the time people might even want to buy the digital version as a PDF of your book. You can go onto Fiverr and people mm-hmm. will format it in whatever way you want and make it look good. So I think for an author, just get started. Get that, Try to create that pilot book initially. Yeah. Okay, so that's authors. Now we want to talk actors. So this should be your forte, no pressure. This should be my forte, except for the fact that it's not my forte. <laughs> but you probably know this industry a little bit better than me. Uh, yes, that's true. Okay, so... Uh... So I'm going to pretend that I'm the kind of person... I'm somebody that wants to be an actor, wants to okay. get into acting. Yeah. I have no formal training. okay. But it's something that I want to pursue. Maybe I do have a full-time job, okay. but I'm interested in getting some acting performances. Right. Okay. So what do I do? So you've never, you've never, you had no training. You've just, you've like woken up I'd, and you've decided that, I like, I would well, like to firstly, that if try. you've just woken up today and decided you want to be an actor, I'd probably tell you not to bother, uh, <laughs> only because it's really fucking hard. Uh, but let's say it's been something that you've always wanted to do. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it at GCSE. Yeah. You've always known you <laughs> wanted to do it, but mum and dad were like, no, become an accountant, which as we know is not a good idea. Um, <laughs> Um, link to a previous episode. Um, <laughs> so you've decided that actually, screw it, it's what you've always wanted to do, you're going to give it a go. I'm at least going to give it a shot, even okay. if that means part-time. So, first thing, and this is a debate in the acting industry, but my view is get the training. Go to drama school, go to a university if you need to, and, and just get the training. Because I think as an amateur uh, performer, um, you can pick up some bad habits, and I think actually... Getting the professional training just allows you to dig deeper mm-hmm. and, and, and really get your craft nailed. But more importantly, I think, is actually it gives you an opportunity to build a network and get some contacts in the industry. Mm-hmm. One of the main reasons I wanted to get training was because I was like, okay, I know I want to be an actor. I know I've got some talent, but I have no idea like how to get an agent or how to you know, get into stuff or even be seen for auditions or anything. So Mm -hmm. um, I want to develop that knowledge. I also want to get some contacts within the industry outside of amateur dramatics. Mm -hmm. So that'd be my first thing, get the training. Um, Then once you got the training, um, I would say build portfolio. I actually recently been casting my own project. So I've been on the other side of the people that are looking to employ. And actually one thing that... I've said to every actor that I've met since I was doing this is you have to get a showreel. Mm -hmm. You have to get a showreel. Um, Portfolio, essentially, is what it is. It's a video portfolio, clips from all of your films. But what have you been in those films? (laughs) What have you been in those films? You need... Oh, based on maybe the stuff you do while you're in training. Well, yeah. I mean, if you get the opportunity to make some films whilst you're in training. But what I was going to say was, so, if you need to get a showreel together, don't pay loads of money to get somebody to write you a showreel because... Um, which I hate saying because actually my friend, a friend of mine owns one such company. Uh, <laughs> but 
I don't do it because um, uh, there are so many factors. I'm not going to go into it. All yeah, of don't them. go just, into it. Just don't. Uh, instead, just invest some time and effort into doing some student films. There are some great filmmakers out there training at film school, like Met Film School or Westminster University. A great, great courses to work with. How do you find those um, so in the area? So maybe you're not in London. Okay. What, uh, well, if you're not in London, it's hard for me to say. But if you go on to... There's Casting Call Pro, which is probably your best starting point um, because it's the more low-end stuff. It's not like the mainstream stuff. Mm-hmm. A lot of student films will put their projects out on there. Look at what's available. Put yourself forward. Um, and, and yeah, so then build up this portfolio. It is going to take some time and it is going to take a lot of commitment. But build up this portfolio. Maybe after you've got two or three good quality films under your belt, Put them together as a showreel. Um, I do recommend, as though I am incredibly biased as an Apple fanboy, I do recommend investing in a Mac. You can get a Mac Mini for five hundred quid if if uh, if you're more low end. What's the and reason behind this, Wayne? The reason is is because of the editing software that's available for free it is good and it just makes it so much easier. I'm sure there's editing software available so on a Windows computer. So this is about computer. putting together your own showreel. So this is about putting together the showreel. Yeah then put that together and then you can use that as a calling card to start hunting for agents get in front of casting directors and things like that as well and is an agent a must and how do you find an agent um, in as quick as possible and it depends what sort of work you want to do um i think there's nothing wrong with having having an agent um i think it definitely helps it takes a lot of pressure off yourself it's worth getting one particularly if you're looking to get into more mainstream stuff I think an agent is a must because you won't even get seen for the mainstream stuff and also actually a lot of casting directors will openly admit that they will rarely see an actor for an audition if they don't have an agent and what if just in general if you want to do acting but you don't take it to that serious film level you just want to do it more on a local level are there any sort of sites that someone could kind of Uh, find these opportunities well if you want to do it on a local level I mean seriously consider setting up your own production company your own theatre company for example if it's just a local level Theatre is probably more the thing that you're looking at rather than screen. So set up a theatre company. You can hire venues for a couple of hundred quid. Um, sell your tickets at a tenner. You only need to sell 20 and you've paid for the venue. And how do you find people to collab with, the so directors or people who have um, done that before? Well, that's why you go to drama school and do the training. But what if you haven't? What if you decide to not do that? Well, then you've not really listened to what I've said anyway. So <laughs> what's the point of listening now? So there's no way to get into... No, I'm not saying that there's no way. I'm just saying if you've, do, if you've done the training, you should have built up a network and it makes it a lot easier, which is why I recommend doing the training because mm. you build that network. If you don't want to, that's entirely up to you. And I'm not saying that, uh, you know, people that don't is bad. I just think you're already putting yourself on a back foot. I know people, some very talented people that have tried to get into the acting industry without having the training. And they've come up against many more stumbling blocks, of which there are already many as an actor anyway. So I think just, yeah, I I, I honestly, I do advocate get the training. Yeah. Because then that leads you in the right direction and you've got something to back up what you're saying. And make the most of that network and opportunity. Exactly, exactly. Um, But yeah, so if you're thinking you do want to go on a local level, there are likely going to be some actors that you train with that are probably thinking the same. Um, So do that. That's how I set up my company. Um, And then, um, you know, then consider the other avenues that you can go down. Voiceover is one that I'm really experimenting with at the moment because I've got the gear. So I may as well experiment with it. And actually, there are so many entrepreneurs, small business owners that want to put together some content because content marketing is the thing right now. So they want video content and often they want some voiceovers for that video content. Um, So make that an option for you. So it's about utilising some of the skills you've got as an actor and maybe how they can apply to earning you some money. It might not be direct Uh acting work on stage or on screen, but there are a lot of these platforms. And that's it, I think, as an actor. The hard thing that actors have um, against pretty much every other creative industry, I think, is that actors fundamentally are part of a team. Mm-hmm. They, what yeah. an actor you can't you can't got, just like a writer you can't just sit down and write your book exactly or, or you yeah. can't just go out with a camera and take some photos and then sell them you have to create a character based off something that's been written um, unless you're improvising which is an option but usually it's based off something that's written so if you can't write if or if you don't think yourself a writer then you need a writer and if you're doing something for film you need a cameraman because you can't you can't really be <laughs> acting convincingly whilst in selfie mode, right? <laughs> so that 
makes it more difficult. The one thing that you are able to do is this voiceover thing. But, uh, but there's other stuff as well. And it's just kind of taking those skills and kind of accepting the fact that if you want to make some money out of it and turn it into a business, beyond having an agent and getting into the mainstream and doing commercials and things, maybe consider what these skills offer and then use that for your bread and butter and then really use that money then to invest in doing the creative stuff that you want to do. Good stuff. So we're going to go on to our next topic, uh, which didn't, is... Didn't struggle with that one as much as I thought. Yeah, it was really good, actually. Thanks. Really good knowledge. Um, so the next one is musicians. So yes. I have a few friends, and I know in the past I've been involved in a band. Before you... we go into musicians... Yes. Do you want to take a break? Well, it's a third one, so I was thinking... Well, we're halfway through the episode. But we're probably going to do four more. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Fine. Okay. So we are actually going to talk musician and then we'll take a break okay and we'll hopefully make this one a quick one okay so musician obviously well everyone's been part of a band probably in their youth or you've got people now who said oh, i wish i followed that creative pursuit i wish i i really enjoy music i enjoy singing i maybe enjoy playing an instrument so we're going to give some tips on maybe how you can kind of get your work mm-hmm. out there and i think nowadays the opportunity mm-hmm. is probably a lot easier to find mm-hmm. an audience especially i wish like... I, I wish i wish i was a musician <laughs> In so, fact, I wish I was all of these things just because I feel like it's they're all easier to make money off of your craft. Oh, definitely. So with a, mu- with a musician, you've got to look at all these people that are blown up by putting their music out on YouTube mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. cover songs. So this is a great way of actually doing it, doing covers, putting your work out there. Um, I think as well, I think with musician, you don't have to think about always being up on a stage i think sometimes you can look a lot local level there are so many venues out there that are looking for local talent to come and do like a i don't know like a little singer sing song in a pub which means you might get 100 quid for the hour wedding singing wedding singing um also i think you can now record you can record high quality audio pretty well you can do that Mm -hmm. from home and then you can put your tracks out onto um things like itunes which means that people can find you through there i think um uh, Sully Brake spoke about that. He was a spoken word artist. He decided to put his music out there and it was actually selling as well. Mm-hmm. I think it's very important nowadays for musicians to be on these social media platforms. I think some of the um, biggest ones have blown up on Vine. I think um, it's about collaborating now. You can contact different musicians. You can get a band together. You can decide to hire a venue where you will put all five of you on stage together and you just sell out by mm-hmm. u- utilize, utilizing each other's audiences. Um, I think it's cheaper nowadays in terms of equipment, whether you need, if you don't need a whole band anymore, you can just have garage band and have these, yeah. um, these different software that pull in all the different members of the band you uh, need. Yeah. A friend of mine actually knows a guy who's actually got quite a fairly decent band and they basically write all them, all their songs or he, he'll write all the songs on something like garage band or audacity using all the instruments that are on there, doing all the the composing and then he'll send it to the band members and then they'll get into a studio and record it within Mm -hmm. a couple of days Mm -hmm. and then you've got an ep or you've got an album Uh and i think this is another great way to go i've seen a lot of some of the biggest bands that i used to follow one of them called in me back in the day they used to be they used to be massive but then what happened is obviously the band broke down a little bit and then the lead singer dave now kind of self-publishes his own album so he basically does kickstarters or is it indiegogo um, mm-hmm. yep. these ways of actually raising finances from your audience that you've built up who then kind of pre-order your album that's coming it means you can work on your craft it means you don't have to be worldwide to actually live off your craft so actually you build your audience mm-hmm. you tell it you they you give away an ep for free first of all they get to know the kind of music you produce they see how you're producing it you bring them into the story of how the production is of the album we all love watching those music dvds from our favorite bands so now you can do that over social media and then that's it. You basically say, hey, guys, I want to put together an album for you lot. It's £10 each mm-hmm. to pre-buy. And then that gives that person the money to produce, the, to produce yeah. the album. And then you can then do a tour of the country and then sell out in different areas. Yeah, I think just to segue a little bit, but I think this kind of applies to pretty much all of them, except actors, uh, <laughs> is that you'll notice the theme is that actually the gatekeepers are becoming less and less powerful. They're mooshed. You don't need, you don't need a record label now Mm -hmm. to promote yourself as a musician and to sell your music i mean it speeds up the process but at the same time if you put in the work and it's something you really want to do screw it if you can't get on itunes sell it on your website using cells for example Uh selz.com um and you can sell it through that Uh and like there are ways around all the gatekeepers now unless you're an actor (laughs) um and (laughs) 
and so just look for those opportunities mm -hmm. definitely i mean even once you put on that gig you can sell your album at the actual gig and mm -hmm. I've, I've, we were in uh ireland and there was the bands out on the streets just playing yeah. music and selling albums uh, mate bought one and we bought yeah i did buy one but our i nearly did. did i nearly did so yeah no, so many no opportunities available <laughs> i think we should take a break now yes let's take a quickie we need to thank our sponsor the university of northampton these guys have been great to us and great to you because them sponsoring us means we can continue doing this, right? Yep. Right? So, uh, the University of Northampton uh, specialise in social enterprise. So, they're all about degrees, obviously, because that's what unis do. But they're also very, very interested in getting their graduates to set up businesses, particularly in the social enterprise space, which is all about business doing social good. So, if you're thinking, yeah, I want a degree, but I also want to set up my own business, then I highly recommend we highly recommend as alumni that you check them out so head over to northampton.ac.uk all the information is there and we'd like to thank them very much for their support of the show so guys this is super cool it is this I'm is quite exciting. super cool so we're going to talk briefly about new media europe mm -hmm. new media expo coming to london and guess who's going to the freaking weather we are oh well, Dan Miller as well. Dan Miller Dan as Miller's well. going to be there as well. <laughs> See, I thought you were going for the Dan Miller thing, but I mean, we're going as well, which is equally cool. Can I say more cool? Dan mm. Miller's not listening. <laughs> oh, God. But Dan Miller actually is one of the first podcasters I listen to in this sort of space. Me too. So I'm really excited. Uh, but yeah, we're going. We're going to be there on a pal. Mm. And many. I think we're allowed to say that, right? I think so. Well, if we weren't allowed to say it, we're sorry. But we're <laughs> we're going to be, be on the panel. We're going to be there uh, making the powerful nonsense presence felt. So excited. It's going to be great. But we want you to come. We want you to come. Please join please. us. Uh, so if you want to get some tickets. Oh, also, hang on. Should we just Let tell them what it's, tell it's actually about? Tell what it's about. I missed that. <laughs> we'll get to tickets in a minute. Or maybe it's just enough to sell it that we're going. <laughs> we're going. Well, that's what <laughs> I was kind of assuming. No, no. So... If you don't know what New Media Expo is, it's basically like the hub, the big conference of all like the media creators, like YouTubers, podcasters, um, digital coming together. media innovators using technology in right. amazing ways. Exactly. So it's all about that production of content in this new media world that we live in where social media is everywhere. Everyone's on social media. Everyone's got a blog or a vlog or a podcast and, and kind of... It's all that gathering of people, getting some great, great value on how that you how you can develop your uh, passions through your business, media. whether you're an entrepreneur. Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's so good. It's going to be so good. <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, so, if it sounds like something that you think you might want to come along to, if you're looking to enter into YouTube, podcasting, anything like that, we can, we can, we can get tickets. They're still available. So if you want them, you can head on over to powerfulnonsense.com forward slash N-M-E-U. Yes, we'll put that on the screen. Okay, right. <laughs> N-M November. Mother. Mother. Echo. Is it mother? Echo. Umbrella. That'll do. <laughs> it's Mike. It's Mike. Mike. November Mike Echo. Uniform. Uniform. Powerfulnonsense.com forward slash N-M-E-U. All ticket information's there. Buy your tickets there. It's going to be so good. And I'm just so excited. as well, just to think about a network and opportunity that's going to be available there. There's mm -hmm. going to be so many people, so many people in the same who are like minded like yep. us, who are creative people. So I think it's a great opportunity and we'd love you to join us. And also, there's actually an early bird offer going on now so you can actually get your tickets discounted to get in there fast. Yes, well said, Jim. Well said. Talking about new media. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right, back to the show. Welcome back. Hello. Went Italian there, just to. Nice. Shake it up a little. Why not? It, I mean, it was awful, Italian accent. <laughs> Sorry for any Italians out there. Highly offensive. Uh, I haven't done that accent for a while. Anyway. Uh, right, so we're talking about how to not be a starving artist mm -hmm. um, and opportunities that are out there to monetize your craft. So the next one we're going to talk about is actually crafts in general. So this is more like artsy sort of thing where people maybe want to create necklaces, rings, bracelets, 
or maybe pottery or mm-hmm. um, I don't know, people do like all kinds of jewellery. And I think a lot of people are quite interested in this. And actually a lot of people are moving to these sort of side businesses that they do at home. It's maybe they're knitting things mm-hmm. that they want to sell online. And I think it's a booming industry. I think there's so I've bought so many bits of like jewellery as gifts for my girlfriend here and there off websites such as Etsy, which mm-hmm. are a great place to sell your stuff. There's everybody's there. Eyes are there. It's a massive marketplace available to anybody who's making crafts. Yeah. What's great as well is obviously the the prices of actual the production, the actual, um, what's it called, the raw materials that you need to create these things are going down in price. They're available very easily. So mm-hmm. I think actually it's a booming business at the moment. This whole making crafts or making mm-hmm. jewelry online or selling pottery, selling rings that you've. Um, I know my friend. She actually had a jewelry business where she was actually. Um, What's it called? Like when a, a proper jeweler, like a when you melt melt all the all the gold and well, she was a proper fully trained jeweler and that became her business. She was selling rings and bracelets and custom order rings online and I think mm-hmm. it's just so available nowadays. Yeah, and don't forget as well. I mean, there's not just like Etsy. There's even the more ones that people know about. Like eBay, <laughs> eBay, Amazon. Like yeah. people sell all sorts of stuff on those platforms. So those, but Etsy's specifically like a crafts. Mm-hmm. One, um, also, if you're more into maybe the actual design part of of that, you've got things like Redbubble, which is how we sell our T-shirts. Mm-hmm. And there are a lot of these companies actually, like Redbubble and like CreateSpace, talking about books earlier, where actually you don't actually have to produce the thing. You mm-hmm. don't have the cost of manufacture. And you don't even have to pay them to manufacture it either. Mm-hmm. What happens is the customer pays that cost and you add your profit, your profit on top. Um, so like with Redbubble, for example, we've never actually manufactured or paid anyone to print a T-shirt other than these ones that we've bought. Um, that's prices included in the price that we charge for the T-shirts, if mm-hmm. that makes sense. So it's print on demand and there's manufacture on demand and things like that with craft stuff. So maybe look into those as well. Yeah, and I also think, again, back to that locality, I think nowadays it's really quite cheap. You know there's a lot of um, markets going on in local areas. I know where I live every I think end of the month there's these little local markets so mm-hmm. you could get a store and then you could put your crafts out on display and you could start selling them on the weekend I think that's a great way to start you can get people going back to your website following your Instagram page seeing all the different pictures right. you're sharing of the kind of products you're selling and I just mm-hmm. think it's a, a massively open market for somebody who loves creating crafts and actually wants to make that into maybe a little bit of side income or eventually maybe if you build up that brand behind what you do maybe you have a certain look to the things you create and I think you can definitely make it into a viable business yeah um, and again, I'm going to bring it up again, Cells, because I love Cells, S-E-L-Z dot com, another great opportunity for you to sell physical products as well, because it does physical and digital products on there. So you can sell directly through your website as well, if you want to, and if you want to build up that sort of audience that is based around your website. And a lot of these things as well tie into social media. Mm-hmm. So you can even sell directly on your Facebook page. Yeah, they've just opened up shops. I think they've just actually created oh, have they? Created paid now on your Facebook page, you can actually create a shop and people can actually make purchases on your Facebook page, which ah. has just came out in the last few days. Actually, Facebook do not want you to leave, do uh-huh. they? they and also, there's another great platform everything. that I've I know is available. And it's called Shopify, which allows a 30 yes. day trial, uh-huh. which means you can just create your shop online and just test it out, get it out there. Mm-hmm. And they look amazing. The templates of the websites are great. Yeah. Cool. So that's crafts. Um, Let's talk photographers. Photographers. There are a lot of photographers. There are a lot of photographers out there. Mm -hmm. A lot of photographers and a lot of photographers. (laughs) Um, The the thing about photography, I think, is there's the the standard business, uh, which is a lot of like wedding photography and fashion style photography, um, which is very, I say very easy. God, that's probably doing a real disservice no. but i mean in terms of com- in terms of instead of like trying to get into like fucking vogue uh <laughs> like it's much easier to yeah. set up your own business and start taking on that uh creative um yeah. well it's that income impetus. they're the kind of ways you can right. get into quite quickly to earn an income right and then obviously a lot of people do the wedding photography initially yeah. as a kind of way of monetizing that skill they have yeah and some people, they do it incredible, and that's why they are known for wedding photography. Right. And, and, and so it's, it kind of is a bit like what I was saying about uh, the acting skills is, um, you know, you've got to take your skills, see where you can turn that into bread and butter. Wedding photography, as an example, very good for bread and butter mm-hmm. um, uh, work um, because people are getting married all the time, right? So use that, use that for your bread and butter and then 
reinvest some of that money into doing the more creative projects. But <laughs> but don't think that you can't make money off of your more creative, more yeah. experimental work. If anything, I'd say that's probably where you can really earn the money if oh, you yeah, really think about it. I mean, wedding photography pays well, great. But I mean, you if you want to be doing the creative stuff, do the creative stuff, put it out there put it on Redbubble where they might sell a t-shirt of that or the print photo. or the poster yeah exactly um and and the thing about photos is they're so transferable to so many different sorts of media i mean you might be, choose to become a stock photography photographer mm-hmm. and sell your um your images on shutterstock mm-hmm. uh, for example um and make money that way the good thing about that is that it's just this recurring income Mm -hmm. that's just never going to stop so long as the internet on those websites are still running. Um, And, okay, yeah, you might not get a big massive payout, but you're going to start ticking over and start getting some regular couple of pounds here and there. And you've got to think as well on these websites. That's your pension. (laughs) You've got to think as well on these websites. Your name is there, so someone likes your style, they might actually get you in as like a proper photography for what they want. But I think a really important point, which I think is coming up throughout these, is understanding that if you have the skill set, find the ecosystem of value around what you do. Mm-hmm. Like the photographer, we know that now a lot of businesses are embracing, are embracing social media. So they maybe want photography of their shop, of the products they sell on a regular basis. Weddings is obviously a prime example. And so it's knowing that you have the ecosystem, you have your high-end product that you're aiming for, but at the same time, if you want to be sustainable in these creative endeavors, it is making mm-hmm. sure that you have multiple streams of income and that you are, and I think as well, you're just going to feel so good where you're earning some income yeah. in some way because then it allows you to get better at your craft because you're spending more time doing it. And then you can kind of have that vision of where you want to go mm. in the end. And I guess with all of these, um, I think the thing to bear in mind as well is, yes, okay, a lot of this stuff is stuff that you may not want to do. Mm-hmm. But if you want to start doing this full time, mm-hmm. it's stuff that you're kind of going to have to accept that you're going to have to do. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then use that as leverage to then do the stuff that you want to be doing. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of artists as well, creative people, they get a bit too proud. They kind of want to put out the work when it's perfect and maybe yeah. they're selling themselves short by doing wedding photography. Uh-huh. And I think sometimes it's about not having too much pride initially. If you want to get paid for something you enjoy doing, you are maybe going to have to take these jobs that aren't lighting you up inside, but it still means you get to pull out a camera and deliver Precisely. your work. You're doing your craft. Yeah. And so, but but if, you end up, if you end up doing that stuff to do the stuff that you want to do, yeah. then make sure that you still do the stuff that you want to do because 100%. you're going to end up falling out of love with what you were doing in the first place. Which does happen quite often. It does often, happen yeah. so much. And I think just remember why you're doing the stuff that you're doing. And, and when you're doing the stuff that you don't want to be doing, just remind yourself that this is an opportunity. You're, you have a chance to do this because you've chosen to do it. And don't get bogged down with the, oh, I wish I was doing that. Use mm-hmm. it as energy to go and do that. Cool. So the last one we have is the designer. I think this could be like a graphic designer. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people have these skills in Photoshop or After Effects. And I think this one is actually, it's, it's a tough one. The, the opportunity is massive, but there's a lot of competition. So you've got, uh, you've got websites like Freelancer, you've mm-hmm. got Fiverr, which are great. And these are places where you can sell your services. You've obviously used Fiverr, now you're getting clients on yeah, there. Yeah, I've got my first client today mm-hmm. for voiceover work. Which is incredible because these platforms are now making it so accessible for people anywhere in the world to buy your services. So yeah. Wayne, potentially, well, you do have a voice co- a voice um, gig that you from someone you would never have met, but no. Fiverr has given you access to make a sale. So mm-hmm. you produced that income. Obviously you've got to look at these platforms because I think portfolio is incredibly important on these platforms because if you really want to be the person who makes the the top bucks and gets paid what you're worth, then you need to really stand out from everybody else because there's a lot of people on there that are doing very light touch work or maybe Uh it doesn't look as good. And so again, but there's people on these platforms. I've been on these platforms and paid people well above what their five dollars might be yeah because i know the work looks great yeah so i think the designers especially i think there's so many different platforms available like we've mentioned and i think with all of these the thing is 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 there's more platforms turning up every day and Mm -hmm. and this is the thing as well right don't just think in this limited scope either um my sister's a photographer and i said to her i said look you're really skilled at what you do and what you think you're doing is simple stuff. I'm watching you do it, sat behind you. Blowing your mind. And I'm just like, you're moving so fast, I don't even know what that thing you've just clicked on is meant to do. <laughs> but it, whatever it's done, it looks great. Um, so 
you know, you've got these levels of expertise as well. You can monetize that by um, putting out a book if you want, or maybe just if, let's say, a photographer um, doing screen captures of you editing a photo, uh, speed it up uh, so it's a couple of minutes long, put it out on YouTube, mm -hmm. YouTube advertisement. Okay, yeah, it's not going to be big bucks, but it's just another little thing that's just filling up that bank account. And all of the most of these things are only going to be the odd quid here and there. But if you're putting out consistently, it's going to start to compound and combine that with all these other opportunities as well. And you're going to find that you're actually making some decent money with inflation. Yeah, I just think there's so many these platforms, like you said, technology is sort of stripped away the gatekeeper. You can now have access to a worldwide audience, which you can sell whatever it is you make or write or do. And I think it's just so available. And I just think that the biggest problem I think that gets in the way of creators is that idea of the pride. It's being too... It's that, not, not I'm being, an artist. I'm an artist, so I shouldn't get paid. Or maybe I'm not good enough yet. And when I get to that point, then I'll start selling my work. And I think it's just a silly way to look at people like to follow your progression, how you develop as an artist. Look at when people look back at Picasso's little sketches and they mm -hmm. now sell for millions. So... Yeah. I think it's just saying I'm an artist, but at the same time, I'm a, I'm a business and I'm actually going to utilize the tools that are available to me nowadays, which a few years ago were not available. So take the opportunity and actually get paid for the work you want to create. And I think it's such a great opportunity to be a creative nowadays and not be a starving artist. I agree. Nice. I like what you did there. Cool. I feel like that's that was you saying, let's wrap up now. I think it was. Yeah. That was too. that bookmark, <laughs> bookmark or closing the book. Yeah. Great. So uh, thanks very much for listening, guys. Again, this is very much opinion based. So this isn't necessarily the blueprint, mm -hmm. but we just wanted to throw a few ideas out there and just say, look, consider this as an opportunity, consider that as an opportunity mm -hmm. and see how, how and if it can work for you. Um, yeah, if there are any other things as well that we might have missed, please leave a comment on YouTube or... Yeah, because uh, we, can, we can obviously put those in the references on the blog, which might help other people in those industries. Absolutely. So do hit us up and uh, hit those subscribe buttons on YouTube and iTunes. Thumbs ups and reviews greatly appreciated. Uh, thanks very much for tuning in and we'll catch you next time. See you later.